Now we install and configure Trinamic 2130 stepper drivers. Hey, stop screwing around. We've got some videos to make here. How about you stop copying in the mind of Matt and get back upstairs and edit some videos? But I thought it was cool. Whatever, just, just roll the thing. Back in March, a man named Mike sent me an email, and he said he was having issues configuring his Trinamic 2130 stepper drivers. Of course I was glad to help, but the problem was I didn't have any 2130s to do any testing on. Mike quickly remedied this situation by sending me my own set of 2130s free of charge for testing. Now Mike, this was much appreciated. The problem is I didn't get around to testing the 2130s until last week, and Mike has since resolved his issues. But I still wanted to carry on with the testing. The 2130 driver is made by Trinamic, and it's a very high quality stepper driver, but it also has some other magic that other drivers don't have. It can sense if you're skipping steps, it can accept diagnostic commands via G-code, and it runs in three different modes of operation. It's also behind some of the magic that Prusa has baked into the MK3. Today we'll be testing sensorless homing, some of the diagnostic tools, and all three modes of operation. And I have to say before we get into any of the testing, that Stealth Chop is one of the most impressive 3D printing experiences that I've ever seen. Tom has created a great video that you should go check out here, but I found that there was a few more things I had to do to get these up and running. So let's get into that now. Here's a look at what you're going to get in the package of your driver. You'll get the driver and all the pins you need to solder it up. You'll notice on a TMC2130, the top actually has no components on it, so you'll want to solder it with the pins down this side will face towards your board. So we'll start by soldering all the pins on the motor side. You can see the M1B, M2B, A markings. This is the motor side of the driver. All of these pins on this side will go down. So you can solder all these just like this. So we have the motor side soldered. Now things get a little interesting. So we're gonna cut these pins up. We'll start out with two pins. Facing down, you'll want these top two pins, direction and step. So we'll solder two pins facing down. So those two are soldered in. We also want the enabled pin down here at the very bottom to be facing down. So there's the enable pin soldered down. Now we have some pins that face up. These four diagnostic communication pins will all be facing up. This geared pin doesn't do anything, so you can leave that open. So those four pins will be up and I'll solder those in. So we've got the four communications pins soldered in facing up. We have one more to do, which is the diagnostic pin, and that goes in this hole right here, the one at the bottom. Just like that, we'll solder that in facing up. And there you go. All the soldering connections are complete. We just have to repeat that for all the other boards. Something to mention before you start your own 2130 install, in the configuration I'm getting ready to show you, we have to sacrifice our AUGS2 and AUGS3 connections on our ramps board. AUGS3 is what allows you to use your L bracket on your ramps to hook up your LCD and your SD card reader. So we're going to have to sacrifice this connectivity in this configuration. I do hope to circle back with another configuration that we can use other pins besides our AUGS3 so you can still use your LCD and your SD card. But if you can sacrifice those for now, we'll go ahead and configure our 2130s to use these two sets of pins. Now we can go ahead and mount this on our standard ramps board. Since our drivers are going to control the stepping, you can remove all these jumpers from each one of the driver locations. The easiest way to tell which way to mount your drivers is to look for the direction pin and the ground pin. They'll be across from each other. Same on your steppers. Here's the ground pin, here's the direction pin. So the driver will mount just like this. Now we can go ahead and mount up the other three drivers. Now we have all four of the drivers hooked up, including one for the extruder. Now we get to work on all the smart stuff that makes a TMC2130 special. All of the serial data out, clock pins, and serial data in will all be hooked up in parallel, so they all go together to the same pin on the ramps board. There's all the serial data out pins, and we'll just put them all on the same slot on the breadboard. Then all the serial data out pins will go to the D50 pin on the AUGS3 connector. So right there. Now we'll do all the serial data in pins. Again, all these will go to the same slot on the breadboard, and then they'll all connect to the same AUGS3 pin D51 on the ramps board, which is right 
here. And we'll do the same with the serial check pin. They all get put to the same rail on the breadboard. Then they'll all get cabled to the same AUX3 pin on the ramps, which is D52. Right there. Now we'll hook up the chip select pin. They get their own individual pin on the ramps board. So the chip select pin for the X motor driver goes to AUX3 D53, right there. The chip select for the Y driver goes to the AUX3 D49 pin, which is right here. Chip select for the Z driver goes to the AUX2 D10 pin, which is right here. And the chip select for the extruder driver goes to the AUX2 D42 pin, right here. Then your diagnostic pins for your X, Y, and Z will actually hook up to your signal wires on your end stops. So your end stop signal for X is right here. That goes to the diagnostic pin on your X driver. End stop signal pin for Y is right here goes to the diagnostic pin for your Y driver and your end stop signal pin for your Z diagnostic pin on the Z driver. And here's what the board looks like hooked up to the printer. Now before you gasp, run away and shut this video off, this is just for testing purposes. If it works out and I keep the TMC 2130s on this printer, I'll make a wire harness that makes it all neat and tidy after the fact. There's a couple things to note when hooking up this printer. This printer uses a Z-probe for bed leveling and Z-homing, so you don't need to hook up the TMC2130 for the Z-end stop on this machine. You only need to hook that up if you're using an end stop limit switch. Also, because the TMC2130s are going to take over for the X and Y end stops, I didn't hook the two end stops up for those. They are included in these wire looms, but I'm not currently using them. Everything else on this machine should be hooked up exactly like I showed you previously in this video. So let's head into Marlin. This is Marlin 1.1.8, and it has been previously configured for this machine. As always, links to the IDE and Marlin in the description below. So we'll start in the configuration.h tab. Let's do a find on end stops. When you're using the end stop feature of your 2130, you want to make sure that X-min end stop inverting is false for the axes you are using. Here we're just using the X and the Y, and the Z is actually a probe. So just make sure these two are set to false or they won't trigger correctly. Then let's search for SD. In this configuration, we're using the pins that support the SD card reader. So this will cause some miscommunication with your drivers if you don't comment SD support out. So put two slashes in front of define SD support. Now let's head over to the configuration advanced tab, configurations underscore app.h. And let's do a control F and find on 2130. This takes you to the 2130 configuration part. The first thing you'll want to do is enable 2130s, so just uncomment define have TMC2130. Now we're going to uncomment each line for each motor that we have the TMC2130 installed on. So we have one for X, have one for Y, we have one for Z, and we have one for the extruder. Next thing we'll do is we'll set the stepper driver settings. For a lot of machines, including my machine, all these defaults can stay the same. I won't go into what all these features do, but the main ones that you need to be concerned with are the current. This is the current value that the stepper drivers are going to run at. 800 milliamps is a pretty good starting point. And make sure none of your axes are commented out. In some of the other versions of Marlin, the extruder zero is commented out, but it's not in 1.1.8. So everything looks good here. Now we'll move down to Stealth Chop. In the version of Marlin that I'm using, Stealth Chop is enabled by default. Stealth Chop is the mode that your printer is going to run the quietest. This uses the least amount of power as well. If you need higher performance and you want to print really fast, you can comment Stealth Chop out and it will use the standard spread cycle mode. I'm also going to uncomment motor driver status. This feature allows you to monitor your TMC 2130s with some M900 commands. I'll show you that after we get things uploaded. Now we'll come down to hybrid threshold. You can uncomment this if you want to use stealth chop and spread cycle. So when the demands of the print get high, it will jump out of stealth chop and go right into spread cycle. 
So you'll hear the printer go quiet, then loud, then back to quiet as the demands of the printer change. These are the thresholds for the speed on each motor that you can set for when spread cycle will kick in. For this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with Stealth Chop. Then we'll enable sensorless homing. So let's take off that comment. This is what enables the TMC2130 to go without end stops. The 2130 has what's called stall guard. Stall guard is what enables the printer to sense when it has actually hit the end of the axes. So you don't need the end stop any longer. These settings are what sets the sensitivity of that stall guard. If you go lower, the stall guard will be more sensitive. If you go higher, it will be less sensitive. So if your axis is sensing home in the wrong spot, you might want to decrease sensitivity, so raise the number. Or if your printer is running into the end of the axis but the motor is still running, you might want to decrease the sensitivity. These are set at 8 for default. I found that works just fine for my setup. If you read in the comments for sensorless homing, it advises you to set home bump to zero. Home bump is what hits the end stop multiple times to double check that it has triggered the end stop successfully. With sensorless homing, this could actually cause issues. So we'll want to add these to the configuration. So right below the sensitivity settings, we'll define X home bump millimeters to zero and Y home bump millimeters to zero. I have also removed the comment from TMC debug just because this is going to give you a lot more information about what's going on with the 2130 while we're doing our testing. After you get everything set up, you might want to come in and comment this out so you get a little less noise in the monitor. And there's one last thing you need to do before you can upload your Marlin to your printer with your new 2130 options, and that is add the 2130 library. The easiest way to do this is to go to Sketch, go to Include Library, Manage Libraries, search for 2130, and if you don't have it installed already, you'll select the version you want to install, and then click Install. When your library is installed, we'll go ahead and verify, make sure everything is correct. And if the compile looks good, we'll go to Tools. Make sure you're on the right board, 2560 for me. Make sure you're on the right COM port. And then we'll hit Upload. Let's make sure everything is moving correctly. We did make quite a few changes to our board and our configuration. So let's make sure X moves in the right direction. It does. Y moves in the right direction. It does. And Z moves in the right direction. Let's heat up. The printer is heating up successfully. Let's do a test extrude to make sure the extruder is turning the right way. And it looks like that's okay too. Now, if you need to reverse any of the motor directions, I just recommend that you flip over the motor cable if you can. If not, you can go into the firmware and make those changes as well. But it looks like we're good to go here. Now I'm gonna take you through a series of quick videos that shows the printer at idle. It shows the printer with the original Palulu clone drivers. Then it goes to Stealth Chop. Then it'll go to the spread cycle and then it'll go to the hybrid cycle, just to show you what the different modes sound like. Let's switch to spread cycle mode just to see what it sounds like. So we'll comment out Stealth Chop and re-upload. Just for fun, let's try the hybrid threshold. Make sure that your Stealth Chop is enabled. We'll come down and we'll uncomment hybrid threshold. And my prints never run this fast, so we're going to lower these thresholds down to 50. The model that I'm using does print infill at around 60 millimeters a second, so we should hear it upscale at that point. Let's give it a try. I have found while testing these drivers that they run really hot, and I'm not sure if that is the firmware or just the nature of these drivers. So let me show you a few of the things that I've done to try to combat this, and I'll show you some of the testing processes that I've used. So the first thing I did was I just threw a heat sink on top of all the drivers, and that did seem to help some, 
but I found you still have to have some active cooling to prevent a lot of issues. So I just parked a computer case fan in front of the board and let me show you what it does with it on and off. So if you do an M122 command, that's going to give you all the information that's currently happening with your 2130s. If you see any hex values down here in the driver registers that's all Fs, that means the board can't communicate with that driver and there's probably something wrong with the configuration or the soldering connection. You're not going to be able to tell a whole lot while the printer's not running, but this will just give you an example of what it looks like from default. The M906 command will give you the current milliamp rating of all your drivers. You can also use the M906 command to set the voltage manually. So say you want to set X to 500, then just do M906 again, it's now at 500. But we'll go ahead and set that back to 800 for now. You can also use the M911 command to see if the temperature warning has been triggered. So now let's go ahead and start a print and see it in action. So you can see in the monitor that at the beginning of the print, everything's just fine. But acceleration is low and the drivers haven't had time to warm up yet. Now we've moved to the third layer and movements are starting to get a little faster. You can see that it's reporting that 800 milliamps is too high and the over temp is starting to get triggered. You can see eventually the print was actually halted because of the over temperature warning on the driver. Now let's go ahead and restart that print. So we're off and printing again. We're still on the first layer while slow movements are happening. Now we're starting to get the over temperature warnings. Now let's turn on this fan that I've added and just see what happens to the print. Now the fan's running directly over the drivers. You can do an M122 command to see the status of the drivers anytime during the print. All the overtemp pre-warns are currently false. They have been triggered in the past, but they're currently false since we turned on the fan. There's a lot of different factors to stepper driver performance. One is the current that the stepper driver receives. The more current it receives, the more heat it's going to produce. Also, the higher the current, probably the more torque the motor will receive, and ultimately affecting the speed that you can print out without losing steps. With all that factored in, I would like to test if there's a scenario where we can lower the current of the stepper drivers and lower the printer's speed and print with a passive cooling system, meaning just heat sinks, no active cooling fan. So let's test that now. So I'm going to jump into configuration.h and I'm going to lower the max feed rate for x and y to 100. We'll lower z to 2 and the extruder to 20. I'm also going to lower max acceleration. I'm going to make x 800, y 800. Let's lower z to 50 and we can probably leave the extruder at 10,000. Then we'll lower default acceleration to 800 and we might as well lower retraction to 800 and travel to 800. Let's jump back over to config.app and let's lower all the current values for our drivers to 650 milliamps. We're still in stealth chop mode. Let's upload that to the printer and test a print. So I've started a print with our new slower configuration and our 650 milliamp current driver setting and the fan that I had added previously is now off. So far, we're about 28 layers into the print, and so far, so good. No overheat warnings whatsoever. Let's do an M122. The stats on the drivers look normal. We'll do an M911. No pre-warnings have been triggered. So we'll let this run and see if we can get a good print out of it. The benchy did complete in about an hour and 46 minutes, and that's a pretty fast benchy. So we could probably bring the speed settings down a little bit further and get it to be even cooler. If you scroll back in the log, you will see a lot of these over temp warnings at 650 milliamp. And if we do the M122 command, you can see all of them except the extruder have been triggered with the over temp pre-warn. So we could probably bring the speed down just a little bit more and get by with only passive cooling. The low speed benchy did turn out pretty well. We did have one layer shift right here in the Y direction that's probably because the current was so low. So there's my progress with the 2130s. As always, there's a lot of different things that can affect this config. The voltage, the board you use, the motors, the motor cables, the printer you're using, the fans, the heat sinks, these can all change how these drivers operate. I have to say my favorite feature so far is the stealth chop. 
It's almost eerie to hear the bearings running without any motor noise at all. These drivers aren't the easiest things to set up. To get all the smarts that they offer, there is some setup cost, but to get the insight into what the driver's actually doing, awesome. I am far from done with testing the 2130s. There's a lot more things that I'd like to test, but I'll probably wait until Marlin 1.1.9 arrives. My goal will be to offer a full featured setup with an LCD display and active cooling, so stay tuned for that one. Thanks again to Mike for providing these drivers, and to Tom for creating a video that got me pointed in the right direction. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.